Hello everyone, thank you for watching another episode. Today we'll be testing and replacing an auto tensioner. Now very quickly, before we begin, built into the housing you have a thick, very very thick heavy duty spring. And what happens, there you go, what happens over time is this can start to fail. So for example if you have slippage on the drive belt, which would affect if you have power steering, your alternator, so on and so forth, you may think this, this could be a problem. I'll show you the steps involved on how to test it while it's still on the vehicle. Also how to test it while it's off the vehicle, how to remove it. And uh, hopefully this gives you a pretty decent idea if you want to take a look at this. Now before we begin, if I'm missing out anything here, if you'd like to see something additional that I'm not showing, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear back from you guys. Uh, you know, if I could do a better job showing uh, what you would like to see, uh, both of us will benefit. So let's go ahead, jump to the vehicle, and tackle the job. The first step is just getting to the auto tensioner, which in this case on this Acura, it's on the passenger side of the vehicle. Right underneath this cover is the drive belt. So we'll first remove this cover, which is, this just grommets underneath here. Just be gentle if you do have these engine covers because you don't want to crack them. Okay. Okay, so the auto tensioner, just to show you, it's this guy toward the bottom. I'll give you a much better uh, viewing in a moment. So let me place the camera on a tripod. We'll first remove the drive belt and get the tensioner off the vehicle. Now there are a couple of ways to test the tensioner. We'll go over three that are uh, widely used, but number one, right here, at the 6 o'clock position and the 12 o'clock position, you have two indicators. What you can do is start the vehicle, let it run, then turn off the vehicle, and check these indicators again. If they're still lined up, chances are your tensioner is perfectly fine. But if they're no longer lined up, then it's a good indication that you need to replace it. So that's number one. The number two is testing the bearing, which we'll do when, I, uh, when we remove the tensioner. The number three is testing the tensioner on the bench. Now in order to remove the tensioner, obviously we have to remove the drive belt. And as you can see, right here, this is spring loaded. We need to push this toward the left or toward the firewall to release that tension on the belt. And, but it's very, very tight, this space. And if you take a look right here where the power steering fluid reservoir is, there's actually, in fact, just a holder. If you just pull this up, it just simply moves out of the way. Now we have clear access to the bolt. And then, because this is incredibly tight, what you could do is create a small extension. This is just a socket, fit it over the end of the ratchet, and then put some extensions on the end. And then this will be a lot easier to drive off this belt, okay? Now, of course, before you remove the drive belt, just make a little sketch of how the drive belt is installed on the vehicle. In other words, the routing location of the alternator, the power steering pump, so on and so forth, so you know exactly how the belt is uh, reinstalled on the vehicle. So press this down, or push it down, and just remove the belt from the vehicle. And once you have the drive belt removed, just give it a quick inspection, make sure that nothing is cracked up, it's not frayed, splitting, and I know this belt is in very good shape because I just replaced it about a month ago, but nonetheless this is the time to inspect it uh, especially with winter right around the corner. Now once the belt is removed, I just want to check the operation of the tensioner. In other words, I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So all that I'm doing is just simply checking the spring operation. And you see how nice and smooth it is? Sometimes when these seize up or they start to go, it won't be any anywhere near as smooth as this. So just check the, uh, the spring tension as well. And uh, that's something else you can do. Now let's go ahead and remove the tensioner from, uh, from the vehicle and I'll show you something else you can try with the tensioner on the bench. Now because the tensioner is so deep in the engine bay, a lot of times it's easier getting access if you just remove the bottom splash shield. Now typically these are just held on by these plastic tabs, and I'll show you on how to remove these tabs. 
and then the splash shield can just drop out of the way and we can get clear access to the bolts. So right here, let me get more light in here. So right here, what you can do is just grab a flathead and there's a tool that's specifically made to remove these but you really don't need it. Just be gentle and just slowly pry both ends. And if you break these, you could pick these up at your local auto parts store, Amazon, they all have them. Okay, so I'm going to remove them along the entire front end and sometimes you may also have a 10 millimeter bolt just holding on maybe usually one on the driver's side one on the passenger side and then this piece will just drop right down now what you can do just to give you some more working room obviously just jack up the vehicle place a jack stand underneath and once you remove the clips in this case I just removed the passenger side I didn't have to remove the pat the driver side so just the passenger side is removed and then we have clear access let me show you so right here so we have one bolt right there a second right here and then we can remove this from the vehicle now the other thing is the tire is right here so if the tires in the way you can also remove it but uh, I think we'll be okay so the first thing I'm going to remove is the larger bolt this is a 14 millimeter as you can see the room is very very tight but you may want to use two hands on this but here we go go okay and then we have one more a little hard to see here right here now to drive off that second bolt I'm going to use a half inch drive ratchet you can use 3 8 as well uh, but whenever I can use a half inch I try to do so because since the handle is longer it's, it just makes the job easier to remove that bolt now I do not have a 12 millimeter uh, that will fit for a half inch drive ratchet, but I do have an adapter. So this is a half inch adapter to a 3 8 socket. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Okay, so here we go. And yeah, this one's a lot easier. The larger bolt, the 14 millimeter, was definitely harder to back off. But let's go ahead and remove both bolts and take off the auto tensioner. So here's another view from up top. Okay, so that's out. Now I can't remove it because I have the frame rail right here. Okay, just grab this bolt. And then carefully there we go and there's your tensioner now to test the tensioner I'm using the same bolts so same 12 millimeter same 14 millimeter place it in a vise you don't have to make it incredibly tight because obviously you don't want to strip the bolts or the threads I should say and of course you should have a better vise than this which is really it really needs to be replaced as you can see my handle is not non-existing at this point but that being said let's tighten it down a little bit and then we're going to test the tensioner using a, a a torque wrench now once we have everything all set up I have my torque wrench dialed down to 40 foot-pounds and I'm going to turn at the at the pulley bolt counterclockwise now what I'm testing is if this tensioner is placing enough pressure on the belt at 40 foot pounds this should not move so again here's the torque wrench and again this I'm sort of worried with this vice because it really is uh, it really needs to be replaced but here we go so 40 foot pounds and there we go I'm at 40 foot pounds and the tensioner is not moving so this is in good shape if your tensioner is moving then you know there's not enough pressure 
being placed on the belt. Now again, for this vehicle, it's 40 foot-pounds. It's a pretty good uh, guide for a lot of vehicles, but if you really want to pinpoint for your specific vehicle, you'll have to search. Uh, a lot of times you could dig that up online or just download the factory repair manual specific for your vehicle. And then the fourth thing also you can test very quickly is the bearing itself. In other words, you can just spin it, make sure it's nice and smooth, it's not creaking, it's not crackling, it's not grinding, it's nice and smooth as you can see. So those are the steps involved if you want to remove the auto tensioner. Test it by a number of different means and really pinpoint what's going on here. Again, if I'm missing anything, if you'd like to see anything additional, please leave those comments. I'd love to hear back from you guys. I'm going to now reinstall the auto tensioner, start the vehicle, make sure everything is in good shape. And until next time, thank you for watching. And if you're curious about the torque readings, the 14 millimeter is roughly 35 foot pounds and the smaller 12 millimeter is 16 foot pounds. In this case, I'm just going to do it by hand. And before I replace this cover here, I just want to make sure that everything is running the way it should be.